Rob Syke here with another edition of Agritrex. This time you find me in the Mississippi Delta. And as you can see from the terrain around us, this Mississippi Delta is extremely flat and of course uh, very, very little elevation. Now I'm standing in a field of cotton and cotton is an interesting crop because cotton is a, is a perennial crop and it's a, it's a crop that will keep on growing but is grown as an annual and is grown in a geographic area that's not natural to its normal habitat. So let's have a little look down here at cotton. These are cotton bulls and the harvesters will come along. Now the bulls have got the potential to actually have five bulls. This one has four bulls of cotton here. Five uh, different areas where the, the uh, lint can be formed. And it's basically plucked off here. And here you have the fibricity. This is the cotton that they're pulling off here. The uh, cotton can yield anywhere from four to, uh, sorry, from two to three uh, bales of cotton per acre. Three bales per acre of cotton is pretty cool. They are using uh, growth, uh, uh, growth management products, uh, anti-gerberellins, to cause the, uh, uh, the cotton to make sure that it's not uh, uh, too vegetative, so they control the vegetative growth, turning it into reproductive mode. And then they'll use uh, a defoliant, basically an ethylene type of product, to cause the bowls to pop open so the cotton pickers can come through here and strip away the cotton and the seed. Then later on in the cotton gin they'll separate the seed from the cotton. So that's the beginning of the cotton story here and uh, it's a really interesting crop and, and there you can see the seed inside of the fiber. Just like that. Here in the Mississippi Delta, there's a number of very progressive farming operations. You're looking at one right now. Um, the average acreage of the farms here are uh, well north of 2,500 acres. And as you can see as we're driving along here, it is just flat as a pancake. And further to that, they're leveling the land to make it even flatter. But this is uh, all coming off the Mississippi. So if it, Mississippi were to flood, this thing just is all one big massive floodplain. I'm on the outskirts of the town of the uh, city of Greenwood, Mississippi, and what I'm standing on here and you're looking at is a levee. And the levee is the one that surrounds the city. There's two levees, one in the county and the other one in the city. The city levees are manned by these pumps, and these pumps will work to uh, pump out the water if there's a breach inside of the city here. And uh, also it deals with excess rainfall because the rainfall is north of uh, 55 inches of rainfall a year. And so that pump will stick that uh, water out over side of the other side of that levee there. And uh, find that interesting. And that other part of the, uh, there's another levee over there way on the other side of the county. And this is the county levee. And what you're seeing here is the city levee. And so if you drove your Chevy to the levee and the levee was dry, I guess that's probably a good thing. Many of the crops are sown down here in beds, and this is a Lister Better uh, made by Orthman, and this is set on 30-inch on rows or 30-inch on center. So this will basically cut and uh, hill up and create the hills that are necessary for you to plant into. A lot of the irrigation pivots are being replaced uh, with this kind of a surface uh, irrigation system, and what they do here is they level off the land with landformers and they put in this uh, poly pipe. They fill the poly pipe up and then what they'll do is depending on the uh, distance away from the uh, pump they will put in and punch in uh, holes into the poly pipe. The diameter of the holes will determine how far and how fast the water runs down the field. So as they walk down the poly pipe what they do is they have a program a couple of them, one Delta program, one called Fawcett, that'll tell the guys how big of a punch or a hole to punch into this poly uh, piping as it goes to irrigate the crop. So that is how they're doing it now. And uh, that is because the old pivots that they had in the system here simply weren't enough to take care of the water demands in the heat of the summer. One of the stories about cotton that I found interesting is that this is GMO cotton. Most of the cotton is GMO and it's triple action GMO. One is that it's Re resistant against the boll weevil. It's all so Lapidoptera resistance, which is a worm that attacks it, and it's herbicide tolerant as well. Now, the herbicide tolerance is key. Before we had GMOs, 
these guys were using up to 24 or maybe even 28 pounds per acre of active ingredient. In other words, 24 pounds per acre of pesticide were being used to control those pests and today we're well under four uh, pounds per acre. So yeah, there might be some trouble here and there with some resistant weeds, although this is pretty clean here. There's ways to manage yourself around that if you use rotations. But the bottom line is we're growing a more sustainable crop here with a lot less pesticides, and that's one of the success stories in agriculture today that's being taken globally in this crop called cotton. Right now I'm here with uh, Matt Ramage, and Matt Ramage is out of Paducah, Kentucky, and he's working for us down here in the Mississippi Delta. Matt, what do you want to show us here right now? So we've got uh, one of the lobes of the bowls of cotton, and not uncommon to have four lobes in a bowl of cotton, and commonly even five, which is a good thing. Um, what we've got is uh, uh, evidence that we've got poor pollination in this cotton. Um, we've got some, some immature seeds or seeds that didn't develop well, and we've got other places in, in this bowl that, uh, you know, it, it, didn't, it didn't even attempt to make a seed, so lack of pollination completely. So there's one mature seed mm -hmm. in this particular lobe that I pulled out of the bowl, and the worst thing about the, you know, these that don't pollinate is that winds up making a seed stain. I don't know if we can get yeah, that got, in the light. So it stains the cotton. It stains the cotton and that fiber is now permanently going to be discolored. Uh, if you get enough of that in, uh, in your cotton, then it reduces the quality, reduces the grade of the cotton. What you doing, Matt? We are cutting open a bowl of cotton to identify what stage the seed coat is so we can understand how far away we are from um, being able to do some defoliation. So the defoliation is for what purpose? Defoliation is to go ahead and help the uh, plant think that it's mature and um, get to the point where the bowls will open so that we can come through with a picker and pull the lint from the bowl. So this is pretty far developed. There it is. Already cotyledons are already developed in there. Okay. And so how far along are we here, Matt? Um, we don't have a good hard seed coat yet. We've still got, we've got a good uh, attachment of the lint to the seed coat, but we don't have a good hard seed coat. We're still a good 10 days away. 10 days away from applying the from picks. applying defoliation. What we're looking at here is a John Deere picker baler. This is a uh, cotton harvester and uh, this is what the front end looks like. This is a six row, as you can see by the decal number six there. And it's set right now for 40 inch rows. And there'll be a variety of row spacings that these growers will use depending on the preference. Anywhere from 42, perhaps down to something as low as 30. And so the cotton is picked up here. You can see this uh, device here, which strips off the bowls and takes the lint and the seed inside here. And then it goes all the way to the back here and then puts it into a round bale that is poly wrapped and that round bale will be up to uh, 1,000 pounds in weight. Uh, and uh, that is how they're dealing with it these days. And then they'll pick that up and haul that off to the cotton gin. So just wrapping up another issue of Agritrex in the background, I wanted to show you the land forming that's going on here. This is where they're leveling off the land using laser leveling. And uh, this is allowing them to put in that poly piping to do surface drainage. So there you have it, another Agritrex with Rob Syke on the road in the Mississippi Delta. Till next time, happy farming.